we are back with the next match of the season. Again, nearing the end. I know I mention that every time I, I start streaming now, but it is true. We have Vigan versus BC Maginot. This one's pretty big. Um, I wouldn't say it's quite as as uh, high stake as the last match, but it definitely is still up there. Uh, Vigan has unfortunately kind of given up its uh, its position uh, as a playoff contender, but it is still looking to finish strong. BC, on the other hand, if it were to lose this match, would be a major blow to the team. So, <clears throat> really, this is this is more of a preliminary for BC. If you're just looking in terms of playoffs, this is kind of a preliminary match. Uh, BC is going to need to win this one if they want an easy run. Now, if they lose, just like Kromar Mine, they are not necessarily out quite yet, um, but it definitely is going to be some more hoops to jump over for their team. But yeah, exciting match all around. I think, uh, and there comes BC all at once, as they are off to do. All that we're waiting on now is the Swedes. Uh, I don't really have much to say about this match, honestly. I think um, BC has a fantastic lightweight lineup, um, but Vigan at lightweight is just a great equalizer. Those, those fast tanks with their Sabo shells can pan pretty much anything, and uh, the way that the rules work in the tournament, those component snipes are always a very real fear, no matter how good your armor is or, or how fast your tank is. Uh, it, it's anyone's game, as long as Vigan is involved. So I think this will be an exciting one. You see you won't take it lying down, though. Those those uh, those stewards are gonna be a monster, I think. Those stewards have dominated the lightweight uh, listing this entire season. So far, we have three ready for Vigan. Only three. Oh, people are asking if I'm streaming. Let me just go ahead and let Kome know that I am. Yep. I gotta pull up my stream overlay too here so I can see y'all talk. Uh oh, no, no, no. <laughs> my computer's decided to open every tab that I have. Put those back. There we go. Alright, now I have the chat up. Pyro has posted the Wikipedia link to Cock and Ball Torture, and we are ready to play. Uh, it seems BC's already lost a member. That was early. Not ideal. Luca Master, just up until recently, was in an RB match. Don't think I missed that. It's an interesting choice. Oh, you know what? Let's get some street music. This isn't the only one here. Let's get some street. What, what do y'all think? I'll, I'll, I'll take the suggestion of the first comment. Do you think uh, Swedish or French music here? Let me know. How do I put this away? I don't want to see newsfeed anymore. Okay. I think we're going to have a few minutes here. We are going to have a few minutes of waiting. Human rights violations by the CIA and cock and ball torture in the chat as we wait for Vigan to show up. Yeah, I don't know what happened to BC's last member. I was kind of hoping that we'd, uh, we'd get this together quickly because I saw all of BC lined up in the chat asking for a host. Anyone have any opinions on stream music? nothing you don't want to hear some uh some french or swedish music just let me know i'll pick one at random if no one says anything why you won't uh, yeah 
will not full screen. Huh. I'm having troubles. The um, you know Windows does that thing. There we go. I got it. Windows does the thing where it pops up the uh, the news column without your say so. Okay. Well, no one seems to have any opinions. I'm gonna put on French music. I I just prefer it personally. I like French marches a lot. Let's see what we got here. There we go. This one looks good. And there is Vigan. Luca has defected, it seems. <laughs> what an entrance. Ramble, think carefully before you do this on stream. There we go. Luca defected back again. <clears throat> We have all the players together. We just waiting on Bramble already up. Okay, I don't think that Vigan is going to say anything. Broach does not speak English, so we're going to go ahead and start. Oh. Broach needs to shit. Okay, never mind then. Yeah, I'll just leave it. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> stream, what would you like to do while Broach shits uh, as the match is about to start? Two, let's go. I need to. Oh, I thought you. Okay, I thought we were waiting on him to shit. Okay, my bad. We're starting. I don't mean to sabotage Vigan there. So it seems that Broach is going to need to get this match done quickly, as he is holding it in. Another exciting development. Now, right away, it will be interesting to see how each team spawns here, because that western spawn has generally been very successful on the defense so far in the tournament. And Broach, right off the bat, going to sacrifice his P-Build to the river. And he's done it. An excellent move. Sort of a, uh, a, a, a torch bearer opening to the Olympic Games, if you will. Pretty exciting. Oh, and look at that! Grog has also sacrificed to the river. Um... Do they not... They have one person out of the match still. Let's see. Make sure that BC is good. Oh, never mind. They got it. They got it. <clears throat> okay, so. It seems that Grog is bringing the B1's hair. The B1's hair, again, one of the strongest tanks in the tournament. This thing is a monster. It's one of the only tanks that can reasonably stand up to a good few shots from these Sable launchers. Um... The Stewart's also a huge contender. These Stewart's are awesome with their shoulder stocks. Uh, good pen. Valentine. Valentine is a little bit less useful in, under these circumstances, I would think. But decent armor, good cannon. Uh, a real, real contender as well. And once again, just as uh, Vigan has been doing recently in the season. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. Well, it seems that War Thunder has taken away my hover controls. <laughs> Thank you, War Thunder. Um, I'm not going to call Rehost for that, I guess, but I, I'll have to be using default and player view for the match. Okay, that'll be interesting. We'll, we'll, do a, we'll do a player view stream. See how that goes. It seems teams have lined up on the opposite sides of the river. BC has taken. Oh, never mind. Oh, I have control back. Excellent. Okay. 
BC has lined up on the south side of the river and Vigan is charging through the north. Now, you know, jokes about Broach needing to poop aside, I think that really Vigan itself just does not handle a game of protracted warfare all that well. BC, on the other hand, you know, with their armor, with their longer range, um, not longer range necessarily, but the ability to be more accurate at range means that they are just overall the better team for protracted setting. Vig, on the other hand, the sluggers, you know, the, the quick, uh, bloody matches are where they strive. So really, I feel that Broach needing desperately to poop and get this match over with is just a an analogy for how the team plays, if anything. Once again, Broach's battle is playing a very important part of this tournament. But it seems that BC, instead of letting their speed handle the, uh, the match, are sticking back with their B1 tear. And taking this slowly. Making a very slow, methodical push up the south side. Grognak has brought a single HE shell for good luck, it seems. I'm assuming that's in his 75mm. I'm actually not sure if uh, you can get any overpressure with that. We'll see, I suppose. So Vigan is taking a huge offensive push right up the north side and position themselves on that river. BC, on the other hand, super slow. Um, just, you know, cover to cover, moving out of spawn. Being very careful with how they approach this. The Stewarts are escorting the B1 tear, which I feel is a smart play. Vigan charging through there, almost outside of the A cap. They have lots of time left until that cap opens, though. Now, if they're able to get a view on BC across this river here, or vice versa, things could get bloody very fast. But I'm not sure if that'll happen. They're not in a position to trade any shots like that anytime soon. Oh, but they're moving south. We have Bramble trying to move south. He pulled the same play in the last match that he played on Breslau. He managed to get behind, uh, I believe it was Urai, and start hitting their tanks from the side and back but in this case if he pushes forward here he is going to come head on with the whole bc team and there he sees it he sees one cross he is going to pursue that and he sees two cross he might be able to get behind the team here he sees three cross and he ricochets off the front of the steward that is an unfortunate shot not really his fault in that circumstance but he's going to get a second chance. There's a difficult shot to make on the move. Props to him for trying it. Maybe what he should have done there is, is uh, slowed down to a stop, see if anyone were crossing. He might have been able to get a, a free pick right at the beginning of the match. First engagement. And he's going to go ahead and it with the Valentine. He's going to ricochet off the Valentine. No, no, he's going to hit the track. And then it's going to be... Two crew down on the IKV, but Breach is still very much active if he's able to repair. And more shots being traded. That is one Stewart. It looks out of the match already. The Valentine is pushing up steadily. The B1 Terror trading shots with an IKV. IKV is trying to get up on his side. No Stewards to support. Oh, and two non pens on both tanks. There's too much to watch. Sebs is already out. That is going to be one M40L out. An orange. Oh my god, this, this uh, brawl of the medium versus the heavy. Unfortunately, the B1 Terra's side armor is going to be a lot stronger than the IKVs. That is another shot. He's just waiting for his friends to back him up. And the Stewart does. The Stewart is able to support the B1 Terra as he takes shots, but he is taking shots himself now. The B1 Terra is going to come in to supplement that. He misses his first shot. There's going to be an easy transmission kill if he manages to survive. And the, the, crew, the gunner crew is out on the B1 Terra. 
And he's gonna get a second shot. If he manages to kill one more crew member, that is the B1 tear out. And the Stuart again coming to support, and he J's out. I believe his breach was out. Um, M5A1, gosh, Pyro is just limping along. He has lost his ammunition load, but he's still very much in the turn. He's gonna have to go back to his point to supplement that. And the last one is Broach, who's gonna get a non pen on the front of the Stuart. What is it with Stuarts recently in this tournament? And bouncing those shots, that is insane. And now he is going to be quickly surrounded. Pyro is more or less out of the match until he makes it back to the point, but both Luca and Grog in the Stuart and B1 Terror, respectively, are going to have the clear advantage here. Broach is going to have a very hard time penning that B1 Terror, and it is not going to have trouble penning him. And there he sees he sees the Stuart. He is going to get the first shot on the Stuart here. He tries, but I think he hits some rubble they're gonna trade without much damage and the b1 terror comes up on the side of it as he sees Eddie manages to bounce the shot but he's going to need a repair now he is going to need to repair that steward is as well how long is his repair i wonder oh more shots he has he's repaired he, he has a shot on the steward and not another non-kill and he is bouncing shots like crazy. That Stuart is behind him. No ammo again in that Stuart, though. No ammo in that Stuart. Now his his breach is orange. He's going to give BC a chance to recuperate. That is crew knock on the Stuart. It is down to two. Broach may be able to take this back, but it seems doubtful at this point. And he's... Luca's... What is Luca doing? He pulls a complete side on Broach. Wow, he knew his position, and he still pulled a complete side angle on Broach. That seems like a, a a strange play to make on Luca's part. I don't know why he would do that. I guess he was trying to go for the flank, but just, a, I suppose, a, a poor idea of where Luca was relative to him. Uh, and, the, oh, it seems the Terror's going to get a couple good shots. Oh, no, that is going to be Gunner out on the Terror, but he still has a secondary Gunner. He still has a second, and he's not managed to pull the shot off in time. A second hit. The Terror is down to two crew. One more crew member down here will spell its end. Non-pen on the engine block. If if the terror manages to kill engine block here, that is going to be the end of it. Another non-pen. He shot over the engine deck. Another non-pen. This, this is the last chance I think that the terror is going to have. This could go on for a while, to, actually. We'll see how it goes. Another shot over the engine, and that is going to be crew knock. He got right through this flat part of the armor on the side here for the final kill. Oh my god, man. That is very unfortunate. You know, from clear advantage to a win by Vigan. Um, I, I, unfortunately, I think it all comes down to that last play by Luca. Um, I think that, number one, they could have used, even without... Um, uh, any ammo they had a three to one advantage and that Stuart could have played a big part of their win with even without the ammo but the the, the main play that lost in that match I think was Luca jumping up over the side of that hill with no idea where Broach was that was that was a uh, man I don't know if I, I don't I don't want to say I'm disappointed because I I would have liked to see Vigan win here too but that is that is hard to hard to see a team come back from that. Congratulations to Broach though on that win. That was very well deserved. A great play and really showing off that those mediums that uh, that Vigan uses sometimes the IKVs are not useless. He were bouncing. He was bouncing a lot of those thirty-seven millimeter shots. Not impossible to pen, but very difficult at close range when you uh, are not sure where to shoot. for this round who cares well <laughs> i don't think there's much else to say that was a short match but a good one exciting development when did i say that oh yeah <laughs> yeah the, the pooping thing um well it seems that that brooch is going to be able to poop so it's good news for him um i'm not sure there's much else to say here that's that is going to be a hard loss for for bc their only chance at the finals now is to win that next match and probably fight some preliminaries. Um, moreover, though, good news 
for all of the all of the five four teams, including Kuromura Media. That is this this loss is going to give them a very real chance at fighting for that number four spot to get into the playoffs. So, an unfortunate loss for BC, um, a, a lucky loss for Vigan and for Crow Marmina. Congratulations, everyone. Well, this is going to be the last match for this weekend. But, I mean, gosh, it's getting, at the end of the season, it is getting so exciting. I'm really looking forward to seeing how these next few matches develop. Um, I think next week we're going to see some more curtain action. Uh, curtain again, a, a very real contender for playoffs. They're only they only have three matches left though, so they are uh, farther away than most teams from the the final rating. All right, thank you guys for watching. I am going to go ahead and call it there. I appreciate. The, uh, the responses from everybody. And I will see you next week. So, goodbye.